guys, let's talk about riding taller, heavier bikes and about some common misbeliefs about riders' height and the desirable seat height. People typically believe that you should be able to put both feet on the ground firmly. And what I find more fascinating is even non-riders have the same belief and they, they sometimes tell us what we can or cannot do. Let's think about it. When is it really important to put both feet on the ground? That's actually when we just start learning how to ride. We don't know what it means or how it is to start rolling. We don't know what it means to balance the bike. We don't know how to stop it safely. Unfortunately, once we learn how to ride, majority of us assume that our natural height is going to define what we ride for the rest of our life. And I was exactly there, exactly in the same camp. Once I learned how to ride, I started learning my preferred seat height, what bikes could be lowered, using suspension, using lower seat. Every time I would travel, I would look for different uh, bikes and preferably lower bikes. I dropped bikes, I blamed heavier bikes for all of my troubles, and at the end I had enough. I decided that this is a skill that could be learned, so I will show you how I did it step by step. I will show you a series of skills, starting with the most basic, the most simplest ones, and will continue building up in the complexity in the upcoming videos. If you consider yourself on a shorter rider side, you probably don't have a motorcycle that's really tall and heavy at the same time, so I suggest you ask your friend to allow you practice on their taller motorcycle. Now the fun part. Mount on the bike from the kickstand kick side and put your left leg on the ground. You can see I'm nowhere close to the ground with this leg. Feel the bike at this point. How does it feel? You will notice that your right arm is totally extended. Now put it vertically. Now you have only three points holding your bike and yourself. How does it feel? Give yourself a minute to process how it feels. And the exercise that we will be learning is practically jumping on the other side safely and making sure that we continue holding the bike vertically. So, this is how it goes. You need to be quick and the point is that you continue holding this bike vertically. Take a minute here. Look at your hand position here. Now your left arm is totally extended, bike is vertical and you are totally in control because you're firmly on the ground with the right leg. Now going back. Again, give yourself a second to feel it. It should feel normal, it should not feel stressful or scary. And jump. Right? left, right, left. It could be actually tiring, so if you're really on the shorter side like I am, you see it's really challenging height for me, take your time, uh, walk away from it, let it sit for a few minutes, come back, do another 10 jumps um, next hour or so. You don't have to be master right away, you will not be. This is something that you want to build in in your muscles, not in your brain. Now I'm going to switch to another bike, but it's still too tall for me because of really a uh, big seat. So the same idea, you put it vertically, it's much heavier, but it doesn't mean it's not manageable. So here this seat is actually easier to slide on, so you do exactly the same making sure your other arm now is extended and bike remains vertical. One, two, keep it vertical. One, two. What's really important to remember, making sure that you breathe, because it's physical exercise. What I find myself uh, building up a discipline, I exhale every time I jump. So inhale, exhale jump make sure that you're breathing 
in and out. Another important one is where you're looking. Don't look there. Don't look a couple of yards away. Look far away. Even if you're doing this in the garage, find a spot somewhere almost on the level of your eyesight and look ahead. Look forward. Don't look down. Feel the bike. Once you did it enough and you feel natural doing this, jumping from one side to another, do you feel you're ready for the test ride? If so, yes, absolutely, go and have fun on some safe environment, and I suggest that empty parking lot would be a great place to start. Here's the summary of today's exercise. You can pause the video right here to read it, or use the copy that you can find in the video description. Print it out and put it in your pocket, so that you can reference it when practicing. This is one out of several fundamental skills and um, I just ask you, do yourself a favor and start being a student and continue working on your skills and improve your skills every time you go out for a ride. Next time we'll talk about slow race, which is incredibly fun. Thank you for watching.